Hey guys, this is Comic Uno and Comic Frontline, and today I'm doing Comic Uno episode 177. And this is a show where I review all the comics I've read this week in one show, so let's get started. Uh, I do have an update before I start the show though. Next week I will not have a Comic Uno episode. Um, I will have maybe a couple of reviews on Wednesday on my channel, but that's it for reviews next week. But I'll be back with Comic Uno episode the week after. And if you have any questions about comic books uh, that I've read, you know, uh, tweet me or Facebook me and I'll do my best to answer uh, your questions there. So uh, maybe I'll have some thoughts on Twitter and Facebook with uh, the books I read. Well, let's get started. This is kind of a light week for me. Uh, only 15 comics. So number 15, the worst pick of the week for me this week, was Shade the Changing Girl issue 4. It's a book I just personally can't get into. But the thing that keeps stringing me along is obviously the high school aspect. I love that, and I, and I do want to know what happened to Megan, you know? I'm very curious in that mystery. But the reason this is low is because I don't think a lot happened in the issue. You, I mean, maybe you're getting some connections with Luma, I think her name is. Uh, Luma's character, you know, w one of her friends knows that she's an alien, and then, you know, everyone's still really creeped out by this character, by, uh, by the new Megan. Um, but I feel like it does go back and forth a lot with, you know, her world, and then I'm guessing who Megan is, and for me, I just don't really like the dialogue, I just don't like the flow of the book that much, but I do like the art, um, but I do think this was a slower issue. I don't know how long this is gonna stay on my pull list, but, yeah, I didn't really enjoy this issue that much. So, Shade, the Change of Girl, issue four, gets two stars. That's number 15. Moving on to number 14, which is a book I think I'm going to drop just for this series and then I'll obviously pick it up again with the next, and that's Injustice Ground Zero issue 3. I just don't feel like this is a necessary book. I feel that Harley Quinn is a much stronger character as a supporting character, not a lead in, in this series. Because uh, I just feel like the wording, uh, the dialogue is just... Um, uh, just, it's very long for, for no reason, you know, it's not, it's not getting a lot of stories, so I feel like it's, uh, a little winded, uh, the dialogue, that's the word I was trying to look for, couldn't find the word, um, it's very winded, the dialogue, and it's, I just can't get into the story, so, uh, I think I'm gonna drop this series, even though it was kind of interesting to see Harley, um, grow, you know, she was very attached to the Joker in this issue, and then she's like, no, I have to help my friends, so it's interesting how she's grown as a character, but I don't think it merits a whole series. Uh, so I'm going to drop this series for now and then pick it up when Tom Taylor returns with the next volume of Injustice Gods Among Us. So I gave Injustice Ground Zero Issue 3 two and a half stars. And that's number 14. Moving on to number 13, a book I'm very disappointed is this low, and that is Champions Issue 4. I was very disappointed with this book because I like the characters, and there's some interactions I enjoy here, but I thought the art was messy with the beginning and end of this issue. So you have the, the orange coloring, which I think just made it really messy in the, in the beginning here. Understand it's fiery, so you need orange, but it just didn't work with Ramus's artwork here. And then even the end where you see them fighting, it just, it, I didn't like the coloring. It collided with the pencils and it just felt too crowded. Uh, definitely the best parts for the art are in the middle when it's just like this blue water and it gives a little bit more room to show the story. Uh, so... And then the story itself was kind of boring. It's just them on this random mission. They get kidnapped and they run away. Their thing blows up. They, you know, save each other. Uh, it's a very skippable issue, I feel. And that's not good with it being already issue four. Uh, I kind of wish it had a story arc and for these characters to do something. And these last two issues have felt fillerish. And it's just the beginning of the series already. Uh, so what is it going to be when we get further into the story? I don't know. But... Yeah, I gave Champions issue 4 uh, two and a half stars. I was a bit disappointed with this book. I mean, I'll keep it because I like these characters a lot, but uh, I'm feeling like an all-new, all-different Avengers tone where it starts out really good, but then the story is not going anywhere. But hopefully it doesn't. Hopefully it does pick up as the series goes on. All right, so now we're moving on to number 12, uh, which was a slower issue, too. 
And that was the Unworthy Thor issue three. I think it's just because I'm not into the cosmic uh, villains that much. So you have like the Collector, you have Thanos, uh, you have Black Swan here just attacking Thor. And uh, it's kind of the same thing where it's just Thor saying, I'm unworthy, I'm unworthy. Okay, I don't need the hammer. I'm going to defeat these people. Uh, but I did like the artwork, and even though it's kind of repetitive, it is interesting to see an unworthy Thor. Uh, so overall I gave it three stars. It's not a bad story, it just kind of felt repetitive, and if you do have a, you want to make your, I guess, pull list lighter this week, uh, I don't think this is something you have to pick up uh, for this week. So moving on to number 11, which is The Flintstones, issue 7, and I love the commentary of society this book makes, uh, but I feel like it's also getting a bit repetitive. It's making the same commentary um, a lot, and, and I feel like with this, obviously, you have the religious commentary, you have the um, commentary on society and creating a society, uh, but I feel like they just had too many characters in this issue. I feel this would be stronger if it just focused on one character, you know, uh, Wilma and Fred, uh, in this story, but there is a lot of characters they were trying to focus on here. Even the art felt a little weaker in this issue, kind of felt a little inconsistent. Like here, uh, we have, um, Fred look a little um, smaller with the proportions and even uh, the way the pencils are uh, for for their faces I didn't really like so yes yeah, so, I mean the art's not bad I just felt a little inconsistent uh, with some of the panels I've seen it a bit neater uh, with other issues but uh, yeah overall I still like the series but it felt a bit repetitive for this issue but you do have an interesting story with Wilma's art pieces that uh, she's not selling her art, and then Fred helping out um, this person that was trapped, and, and their boss just didn't want to spend the money on saving them. So I thought that was kind of an interesting story. So the Flintstones issue 7 gets three stars. Moving on to number 10, which I thought this was going to be a lot higher because I was looking forward to this story. So number 10 is Superman issue 14. Uh, so this is where we get to see all these multiverse characters of Superman, and I was expecting a lot more from this, because I'm like, oh cool, we're getting all these multiverse characters, but they really make you jump into this story, you know, uh, our Superman meets uh, Red Sun Superman very quickly, you get all these other heroes really quickly, and it's kind of just thrown in your face, I feel like uh, there could have been a lot more build up here, uh, and that's why I just wasn't as interested in the story, uh, the artwork was good, yeah, but... It just it threw you into the story way too quickly, where you couldn't appreciate everything that was going on. Uh, so, if you really liked Multiverse and uh, that other Multiverse story that came out with Grant Morrison, you might really like this. But, if you don't, I think they threw you into it too quickly. But we'll see, you know, I'll, I'll get the next issue. I, I just thought this was going to be a better issue for me than it actually was. So, Superman issue 14 gets three stars. Now moving on to number 9, which is Justice League vs. Suicide Squad issue 3, which is getting higher, so I'm glad to see that. I still don't know if it's a necessary event you need to read, still a little bit debatable about that, but um, it's fun. You know, if you like these two teams, it's enjoyable, and here we learn that uh, Maxwell Lord's Suicide Squad was the first, and they want to kill Amanda Waller, and Amanda Waller is using the Justice League and Suicide Squad as pawns to protect her, pretty much. And that's very Amanda Waller. If you like her character, I think you're going to really like this. Um, the artwork was good. Is it a slow story still? Yeah, I mean, it takes a while to get to the point, and... Again, I don't know if this is a necessary event to be so long, but I like the issue. It wasn't bad, so I gave it three stars. It's in the middle, uh, you know, it's not like the best thing in the world, but it was more interesting than what we've been getting with the event. So now moving on to number eight, which is Nova issue two, uh, which it was cool to see Richard Ryder and Sam interact with each other a bit more. Um, definitely my favorite part being uh, the champions interacting with Richard Ryder, just showing how much the Marvel Universe has changed. Uh, so even though I didn't like champions this week, this was 
a better Champions issue than the actual Champions this week. Uh, the art work for me, though, still, uh, I like the coloring. Some of the facial expressions I think could be better. Uh, like, even Richard Ryder's helmet, I don't think really fits his face very well. And then some of the side profiles, I think their facial expressions are weird. So, yeah, I think that could be better. But I'm getting used to it. I think it fits the style of the book. Uh, and then I love that they're bringing in Sam's heritage with his family. I kind of wish they did that in other Nova books too, uh, also, because it, it kind of feels like a weird uh, shift for uh, Sam's mother because she feels like a different character now. But it's still cool that they're bringing her her heritage in, or both their heritages, in into the story. I think that's cool. But uh, I think they should have done that in the previous Nova stories too because it feels like a big leap that they're kind of changing her character in a way. Um, so I want more of Sam's mother's personality. Um, we haven't really gotten that um, yet. Hopefully we get to see more of her. Uh, but yeah, Nova issue two. I, I didn't love the cliffhanger when they went to space this space bar and they run into people like that. I wasn't as interested in, but I like the friendship Sam and Richard Ryder are making, and they definitely have a lot of fun parts of Sam talking about his uh, girlfriend, kind of, uh, him having his voice crack all the time, uh, so they have a fun dynamic, and I think this is an issue worth reading. So Nova issue 2 gets three and a half stars. So now I'm moving on to number seven, a book I was really surprised by because I usually don't get it, but I only got it because it was a tie-in, and that was Just League issue 12, and I was surprised, oh uh, yeah, issue 12, um, I was surprised with this issue because it's an origin story pretty much of Maxwell Lord in The New 52, and you learn about, her, learn about his mother and exactly why he wants to go against Amanda Waller, and I thought it was really cool story. I think they gave him a good personality uh, if you don't know much about his character and if you do I, I think they get his personality right. And the artwork was really good for the story so I'll give it three and a half stars. I actually think it's worth picking up and I kind of wish this issue came out before Just Sleep vs Suicide Squad because you'll get even more from that event if you know more about this version of Maxwell Lord. Alright so now we're moving on to number six. Yes, number six, which is the Unstoppable Wasp issue one. Uh, and definitely the best part of this book is Nadia herself, her personality, that she wants to become friends with everybody, she remembers everybody's name. I thought that was a really cool aspect of the book because she definitely doesn't have the best childhood. She was in the Red Room for all her life and now she's deciding, no, I want to live life now. I want to see the positive side of life. And she's infectious in the book and, and her relationships with Miss Marvel and, and Mockingbird was a lot of fun. The plot overall, I don't know how to feel about though. Um, you know, her making this girl uh, science thing, I don't know where that's going to go and I, I, I hope it doesn't feel serialized because of it. Um, and also the artwork for me wasn't the best. I think it fit, it fit the tone, but I didn't love the facial expressions. I do think it felt crowded at times, like over here just didn't pop as much as I wanted it to. Uh, so overall I'm going to give uh, The Unstoppable Wasp issue one three and a half stars. Definitely worth picking up for Nadia, but I don't know where the series is going to go um, in the long run. Alright, now we're moving on to top five, number five is Nightwing issue 12. This has been on my top five. I think almost every week it's come out um, for this new arc. Uh, it's just improved so much and I actually dropped the series for a while because I didn't like Detective or Spy uh, Dick Grayson. But now I think uh, the series has finally found its groove. Love the artwork and the action. Um, but I like that it's Dick Grayson uh, figuring out his identity, uh, obviously outside of Batman and, and even Grayson outside of his super spy life and just figuring out who he is, even if that means teaming up with bad guys. But it doesn't feel like the whole, um, what's his name, rapture story. It actually feels like these are good people trying to be better. And that's why I like, I like this story, because uh, I think... Dick can relate to that um, and it's him trying to help this girl gets kid not kidnapped but gets arrested for something she didn't do uh, and Dick Grace is trying to help and each time he's like oh, I want to kind of have a normal life but at the same time I need to help these people uh, it's a little slower this issue than the previous issues 
it's still kind of the same thing. Oh, I need help this girl. I want to, you know, I want to team up with these people. I, I want to become a runoff, which he does in the end. Uh, they officially call him a runoff, which was cool. Uh, so... Overall, I'll give it three and a half stars. It was it the best Nightwing issue, no, but I still think it continues to be a, a fun series. Moving on to number four, which is a book I really enjoyed this week, and that was Just League of America, Adam Rebirth, issue one. Uh, if you don't know anything about Ryan Choi, they do a good job at describing how he becomes Adam in the New 52, how he creates his relationship with Ray Palmer, and I liked it. I thought, you know, you get into Ryan's head really well. The artwork is good. Uh, there are times where I feel... Uh, Ray and uh, Ryan's roommate look very similar, so it got a little confusing. But other than that, I, I thought the style worked really well. I liked it. Um, yes, as uh, Ryan's roommate that looks exactly like Ray. Uh, but I gave this a solid four. I liked it a lot, and it, it got me excited to see his character in Just League of America. So now moving on to number three, a book that I think really improved this week, and that is Green Lanterns issue 14. And with this book, we finally see the end of the Phantom Ring arc. I think that went way too long, but maybe because it's bi uh, monthly if it, or bi weekly, it feels uh, longer than it is. Uh, but. I like this issue because we get to see the end of the Phantom Ring uh, character, even though I like him as a villain. It just kind of felt like it was a bit long-winded, <laughs> the arc. Uh, and then Jessica putting on the Phantom Ring and it's her thinking, I don't want fear, I don't want fear. And her willpower of not wanting fear allows her to stay as a Green Lantern. And then even her relationship with Simon, I think, has gotten so much stronger. She, uh, They both interact with the, the other Green Lanterns. And then the cliffhanger is that the bad Guardian is in the good Guardian's body. So we're going to have to see how that works out. Uh, but it was an interesting cliffhanger. And the artwork has improved a lot, too. I feel like it's less sketchy, um, better line work, um, and overall a very solid issue. Uh, if you're a Jessica fan, I think you're going to really like this. I know I did. It was a really cool character issue, and again, I think it was an interesting ending and finally conclusion of the Phantom Lantern story, but I definitely wouldn't mind seeing the villain again. Um, Plus, they built him up well. I just felt like him changing all to the emotional spectrums was getting a little boring. But I do like the character. So, Green Lanterns issue 14 gets four stars, and that is number three. Moving on to number two. A book I've been loving, and I thought this was a really solid issue. And that is... Hawkeye issue two. Um, very solid issue of uh, Kate trying to figure out more... Uh, about these mysterious people who have been targeting um, her client, and her client's been missing this whole issue. She doesn't really question that as much in this issue. But she goes into the organization finding more about them, uh, and they're brainwashed. So it's definitely more than just a stalker. Uh, it's this whole cult, and then Hawkeye definitely gets herself into a situation by the end. And she's like, oh no, I don't know what to do. Uh, you know, we'll see how Kate gets out of that. But once again, I think uh, Kelly Thompson does a great job at Kate's personality, making it really fun. And then the artwork, I love how Kate looks at sur her surroundings. This panel is so cool. Uh, and this, again, just using her surroundings and, and utilizing that. Everyone thinks she's the underdog, but she always proves herself in the end. So Hawkeye issue 2, once again, just a really fun issue, and I can't wait to see where the series goes. I do believe this could be one of my favorite series of 2017, if it continues to, to be this good. So now moving on to number one, my pick of the week this week was Batman issue 14. I thought this was a really well done kind of love letter to Catwoman and Batman, where they spend the night together, they do the things they feel obliged to do, steal, help people, fight villains, uh, but then in the end, they're together, and, and that's all they ever wanted, even though they probably know it's not right to be together, because they don't work together, but at the same time, they do. Uh, and this is Catwoman wanting to spend her last night um, as a free person. And she's okay with going away if, if she has this one night. I thought it was really poetic. Um, do I think this is a slower issue? Yes. I still think that the story needs to pick up a bit because um, the last arc was a bit slow. But I, I think the artwork was really well done. It, it showcased Catwoman and Batman really well. 
Um, I kind of like the angles too, where it's always focusing on the sky more, which, you know, some people might think, oh, you know, why is it not focusing on the people? It definitely focuses on the diamonds in the sky, um, which I really liked. I liked the, the, the angles that they choose in this book. Um, this is another great example of the angles. Uh, so overall, I gave this four and a half stars. Really enjoyed the issue. Also like the Holly Robinson uh, little reference. Maybe we'll see Holly again. Who knows? She's the pre a uh, pre-New 52 Catwoman. Um, so hopefully we would see her again in the New 52 type uh, storyline. Uh, but yeah, I gave Batwoman, I mean Batman issue 14 uh, four and a half stars. And that's my pick of the week. So hopefully you guys enjoy, uh, enjoyed. Let me know in the comments below what you thought. What was your worst pick of the week and best pick of the week and everything in between. Let me know. This is Comic Uno and Comic Frontline. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Don't forget to like my Facebook page. Also description below there are links for my comic book Like Father Like Daughter. And don't forget to like the Facebook page of Like Father Like Daughter. I'll see you guys later. Bye.